Welcome back to a brand new episode of the UEA podcast, recorded as always live in the Blue House via Zoom. With a little bit of a warning, so today's episode, my internet was not playing very nice. So the sound works great. Every now and again, the picture's a bit like frozen. So just just bear with it. It was a case of done being better than perfect. The alternative was not to release the episode at all. And we have three really good stories and three reminders from God this week. So I didn't want to not share today's episode with you, but I do want to give you that heads up. Uh, Like I say, when you see the picture freeze, don't worry, keep listening. We're going to get there. Uh, With that other reminder as well, if you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. There's a button you can click uh, to get notifications so you're notified when the next episode goes live. And finally, if you'd like to join us as we record the podcast live together on Zoom every Tuesday, it is part of membership of the Blue House together with lots of other really good stuff. So I'd encourage you to go to uia.com forward slash join to consider coming to join us. With all of that said, let's get cracking with today's episode. Episode so, of the podcast. Today's episode of the podcast is called Embrace Who I Created You To Be, which, as you know, is one of my favourite things to get all geeky about. I love encouraging you to be who you were created to be. But this one today was not my idea. This is all thanks to uh, a little um, walk I had. It was yesterday. I had this really strong nudge to go over the beach. Some of you know that Molly's getting a little bit elderly, bless her. So we don't go to the beach every day because it wears her out. But I had this really strong nudge to go to the beach. And so we went the short way to try and you know, spare her legs a little bit. As I'm going along the beach, um, the tide was way, way, way out. Um, I don't know anything about geography, really, um, or tides or the way that our beach works. It, it puzzles me and makes my brain hurt to think, how is it I can walk along the same beach at the same time, several days of the week, and one time the tide will be way, 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 way out, and then other times the tide will be really far in. It's weird. I understand it's to do with geography and stuff. Let's not even try and go there. However, the tide was really far out. Molly loves it when the tide is in because she likes to jump over the waves. She couldn't do this this time. However, we'd gone halfway up the beach and suddenly there was all these like black bits of stone and um, I've got a piece on my shelf that I can't show you because my arms aren't long enough. But because of where I live, somebody told me that it's to do with like um, coal and debris and because we're used to like steelworks and stuff. I don't really know. Um, but it's it, it's quite fascinating to see all these bits on the beach. And then I saw an object, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Don't get too excited. It's a random object. It's not like that. It's amazing for reasons I'll explain. Uh, and for people listening on the podcast, you're going to have to hop across to, across to the YouTube version, assuming the YouTube version works because my video is being weird. But I happened to cross this stone uh, and it's sort of like a tan colored on one side and it's like black on the other little specky bits but it was so different to everything else that was on the beach it grabbed my attention I was like oh okay and so I got this nudge to pick it up and I picked it up and it's a little bit of residue on it I'm like oh it's a bit messy and I was like okay hold, hold on to it anyway so I did but this is really interesting and then I walked a little bit further and then I saw another bit which is even more cool. It looks like a dinosaur egg to me. It's not a dinosaur egg. It's another random piece of, I don't know, stuff. But it was because I'd seen this one that suddenly I saw this one, right? And I was like, hmm. And so I had this really strong nudge. Grab them both, take them home. Now, if anybody is following along who says, is going to tell me it's against the law to pick stones and pebbles off the beach. Okay, I know. If everybody took the stones home from the beach, there'd be no stones left. I will take them back to the beach. Uh, Genuinely, I'm not just saying that. I will take them back to the beach so that somebody else can have the pleasure of them. But I wanted to show them to you Uh, because I felt this really strongly. Take them home, take them home. I was like, okay. So I got home. Okay, God, why have I carried? Bear in mind, I mean, they're not very weighty, but they're quite they're quite full in my hand so I'm walking along juggling my stones and I've got the dog and I've got the doggy bags and I've got my keys and you know luckily I brought a bag this time otherwise I would have like just dropped everything um so it's like what what, what's going on God what are you telling us you know what because I felt like there was a story here and I'm like what are you saying and he said this stone this first pebble grabbed your attention because it was different to everything else around it I was like, okay. He said, I need you. I don't need you to be different to everybody else around you, but I need you to be you. And sometimes you being you makes you feel like you're a little bit crazy or a little bit different to the people around you. Not in this community. We are in this community. We're all crazy and a little bit bonkers together. But in terms of doing life out loud in, in, in the, in the world outside, I sometimes feel a bit, Hmm. And then God said, 
And the benefit of you being you and embracing all of those quirks and those eccentricities is that you're then going to help other people be like that too. Not be like you, but you give permission to other people. You help other people embrace who I created them to be when you show up and be you. I was like, oh, yeah, that's quite cool. I get that. That's lovely. He said, you don't quite get it yet. I was like, fair enough. Bear in mind, this was yesterday. And then today, after I'd taken the kids to school, I was driving along. Now, I know you don't know the location. Jill, sorry, podcast listeners, Jill is in the Blue House. She's been to my actual Blue House. She might know where this road is. There's a big, long road that leads from school back to my house. And as I'm, I came off the roundabout and turned, went down the road, and there's a new little sort of bit where they've lowered the, the, the pavement to make it easier for people to cross the road to go over to the water park. There was two great big fat geese wandering across the road slowly, like squawking their heads off. I don't know what noise is the correct noise for a goose. And I almost did a goose impression. I stopped myself. You'll be glad. So there's me sat stopped on this side of the road. There's another blue car stopped on the other side of the road. And the pair of us are just stood, sort of sat there watching these two geese waddle across the, across the road. Well, squawk, squawk, squawk. With mind and no, no care in the world for anything other than the fact that they got quite safely across the road and we were laughing. I was laughing to myself in my car. I saw the lady in the car was laughing because it was just it, it was hilarious. We, it, it was a lovely brightening moment to my day. I was like, oh, and then as I was running out doing errands, OK, there was a sorry, there's a bird theme to the rest of my stories. I just want to say if anybody listening has a bird fear, then you might want to tune out for the next two minutes. Uh, but nothing bad happens and no birds are in. Carried on running a few little errands today. And there was a great big seagull whoof, swooping around in front of the car. And I'm like, I'm in the car and I'm ducking, which I don't know what good that would do, because <laughs> it's not like as if I could stop it. I didn't get hurt, thankfully. And then. The icing on the cake of this story, so to speak, was I happened to glance out through my back window uh, as I was making lunch. And there was three or four little tiny birds. I'm going to call them sparrows. I don't know if they were sparrows. I'm not a bird person. I mean, I like birds. I think they're brilliant. Uh, but I don't know for definite that they were sparrows. We'll call them sparrows. They were little birds. And they were just sort of dancing around, doing their thing, getting their food. Again, not a care in the world. And I, you know, you get those occasions where things just... you. Uh, your attention is, attention is drawn to things. I was like, okay, God, what are you saying? And then he reminded me, and you're going, those, of, those of you in the blue house and those of you perhaps who listen along who get the love note, you're going to see this in, in one of the love notes later on in the week was that reminder. The goose doesn't care that everybody's waiting while she crosses the road. I'm saying she, because I think it was a girl goose. The seagull swooping around, just doing its thing, doesn't care, isn't worried what you might think. They're not thinking, does my bum look big in this? Should I be eating this right now? No, they're having their dinner because they're hungry. So if these birds and these creatures that I created can simply embrace who, who I created them to be, why can't you? I was like, okay, well, I can on a good day. He said, yes, you can on a good day, but sometimes you're afraid. Oh, and then he said, and that's what I was telling you through those stones and you're going to share it today on the podcast. I was like, okay, that in essence is the, the reminder and the encouragement for you from today's episode of the podcast is God is giving you a very strong nudge. Well, I should rephrase that. God gave me a very strong nudge, which I am passing on to you, that he wants you to embrace who it is that he created you to be. He thinks you're brilliant. He believes in you. He thinks you're wonderful. Uh, and so I don't look like in the context of your day to day life, but I want to encourage you to explore that with God over the rest of today and the days to come. Don't just do this in your head. Take time to actually explore this with God, because we sometimes get one story. We sometimes get a bonus story. Uh, we don't usually get like three stories and an extra one. So I, it really felt strongly on God's heart. Uh, he is really serious about you being you. And I mean that in the best way possible, um, because one of the other things he reminded me was you don't actually have to. Because, you know, how do I explain this? Holy Spirit? OK, so, you know, sometimes when you feel like God is telling you something really like, OK, I get it. And then if, you, if you're me, at least, you tend to, if you're not careful, you're like, OK, I need to really, really concentrate on this. There's a danger that you maybe slip into like serious or even worse, striving. Now, some of you might be serious or you might be more serious than me. And that's perfectly, delightfully wonderful. What's not perfectly, delightfully wonderful is if you're not very, very serious and suddenly you slip into very, very serious striving in order to be who God created you to be. It's like this sort of contradiction. Um, and so I just want to encourage you, like I say, we're going to do this 
we've got a little question we're going to explore together. But more than anything, I want to encourage you to explore with God what this means for you. Because we've, we've said many times in many different contexts, you know, we show up and we share something and actually what the other person receives will be what they need in that moment. I had a real classic example of this in Sunday. I was visiting my home church. The lady was preaching, was preaching on Solomon. I, I don't actually remember what her point was. The point that God had for me was something completely different. Well, it wasn't completely different, but it was tangentiated, but it wasn't her main point. Um, so it was a real classic example of, of you know, Holy Spirit showing up and giving me what I needed uh, as opposed to what was necessarily on someone's piece of paper. And the same is true for this as well with the podcast episode and any podcast episode that I share. Yes, I love sharing stories. I love that we get to explore it together afterwards here in the Blue House. But more importantly, I want you to get from this what God is inviting you to consider. Uh, so with that said, the little question that we're going to take a moment to explore uh, and I'm going to be transparent. I resisted this one. But the question uh, um, is where in my life am I afraid, anxious, or uncertain about who you made me to be? Where in my life am I afraid, anxious, or uncertain about who you created me to be or who you made me to be? Because my initial reaction was like, I'm not anxious or afraid or uncertain about anything. I love being me. And God was like, just write down the question and let's explore it together. I was like, okay. <laughs> so podcast people, you have an opportunity to do this with, within the community of you and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With that reminder as well, of course, uh, if you're following along on the podcast, whether that's on YouTube or one of the podcasting platforms, and you don't have a, a safe space to walk out what it means for you to be you, consider coming and joining us in the Blue House. We have lots of deep end conversations, uh, and they are very brilliant and gracious about it help in encouraging you to be who you were created you to be. The reason I say that is I get to show up and be me every single time, and everybody still likes me, so... <laughs> I'm going to pray us into the activation. Uh, but remember, if you are following along on the podcast, don't just do this in your head. Take some time to explore it, even if you're feeling resistant. I've already told you I was a bit like, yeah, I don't know. Who knows what God's going to bring up? It'd be really cool. And he loves it when you ask him questions. Anyway, let's just pray. So reminder, I'll read this again. Where in my life am I afraid, anxious or uncertain about who you created me to be? Uh, that will be in the show notes. Um, We'll see what comes up. We'll explore it together in a moment. But first, I'm going to pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Papa, Jesus, and Sam, I just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that we get to come together and explore all of the different pieces that you put on our hearts. I thank you as well for the conversations that we have privately behind the scenes beforehand and afterwards sometimes and all of that. The fact that we get to do life together in community, lifting each other up, the nudges, the encouragement, all of that really good stuff. You are brilliant and you know what you're doing. Even the times when we like, we're really not sure, but you still know what you're doing. And I just thank you so much for that. I thank you for your love. I thank you that you want to do life with us. I thank you that we can bring you all of our questions. We just thank you so much for, for who you are. And as we come now to, to hear you and hear what you have in mind for each of us personally, I just pray that you would open all of our senses so that we do receive what you'd have for us in this moment. Because yes, you know, I love telling stories, particularly when my internet's working, but even when it's not working great. I love telling stories. It's great. I love helping people to smile. But more importantly, what we want in this moment is for each person, whether they're in the room or whether they're thing afterwards, to hear from you. And where we have, where we feel uncertain, where we, where we feel doubt, where we feel reticence, I just ask right now in Jesus' name that you would bind and 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 hold firm away from our thoughts any of that hesitancy, so that we can hear you clearly. And we just thank you that you want to do life with us. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross that shows us just how loved we are, that we can be in relationship with you. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Thank you for watching today's episode of the podcast. I do hope it's been a real blessing to you. Don't forget to do your homework. Don't just do it in your head. And remember, if you'd like a safe space where you can come and actually explore that homework together in real time, plus loads of other really cool stuff like the Rainbow Room, our monthly one live events and all that good things, I would encourage you to come and join us in the Blue House. It's our online community, not on Facebook. We have our own platform uh, and uh, it is growing and a place where you can walk out what it means for you to be Yuya. So I'm excited for you to consider that. Yuya.com forward slash join is where you can do that. And if you know somebody who would benefit from today's episode, please do share it with them. I don't know who I don't know. But if you know somebody who needs that reminder to be who God created them to be, please do share.
And finally, if you have a podcast, event, um, online summit, whatever that good stuff, I love sharing the Yuya message. Remember, Yuya, you being the person God created you to be in intentional, expectant relationship with him. If you know that your audience would love to be Yuya, please invite me. Go to yuya.com forward slash speaking to send me a quick email and tell me all about it. With all of that said, I'll be back next week. Same sort of time, same place. And thank you for being here. Take care. Bye-bye.